Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI Overlord, and recently Midjourney released their brand new V4 version, and I gotta say, I'm very impressed. The results that you see on the community feed are just out of this world. These are the kind of images that you will never be able to do using stable diffusion only. I mean, look at this one, for example, this is insane. And unless you train the stable diffusion model using this particular style, you will never be able to create this in stable diffusion alone. And yet Midjourney V4 is able to do this easily. So in this video, I'm going to go through the new Midjourney V4 version, tell you what it's good at and what it's bad at, because yes, it's actually not perfect, and also we'll show you an interesting workflow that you can implement using paidhua.com to get absolutely gorgeous images by combining the currently two best text-to-image generators on the planet. And at the same time, this will also be a little update for my outpainting video that I did a few days ago, because currently a few things have changed. Now before we begin, let's actually answer the question, how do you actually get Midjourney for free? Well, I know that technically Midjourney is a paid service, since they have two membership options available, the $10 per month that allows you to generate around 200 images and a $30 per month that allows you to generate an unlimited amount of images, which is what I'm currently using and I personally absolutely love this pricing. Because since this is running on Discord, I can actually use this on my phone anywhere I want. Now the other option that you can actually do if you do not want to pay is to actually create a new account, join the Midjourney Discord server, and you will actually receive for free 25 queries. And since each query generate 4 images, you can actually generate 100 images for absolutely free. And then either you choose a subscription service, or if you really don't want to pay, you could technically create a brand new Discord account, rejoin the Midjourney Discord server with that new account, and then enjoy the new 25 queries on that new account. And to use one of these queries, all you have to do is just come right here in one of those newcomer rooms. For example, let's click on this channel. And as you can see right here, there is a bunch of new people who have just joined the Midjourney server generating images themselves. And all of that absolutely for free, which is actually pretty cool. So technically, yes, you could use Midjourney for absolutely free. Granted, you spend the time creating new Discord accounts again and again. Now then, once you have your new account on Midjourney, how do you actually use the new V4 version? Now for this, all you have to do, in the chat box, you're gonna type slash settings, and then you're gonna press enter. And as you can see, you will see a bunch of settings right here, and to be able to activate and use the Midjourney version 4, you need to click on this button right here. Also make sure that you're using the beta upscaler, which I personally find is the best one out of all the options right here. And then once you're ready, all you have to do, in the chat box, you're gonna type slash imagine, press enter, and here you're gonna see a prompt box appear, and in this prompt box you're gonna type what you want to see. And let me just copy and paste the prompt that I saw in the community tab, which is realistic vanilla carved mini pig in the soup bubble in the sky, and then you can simply press enter. And in a few seconds, Midjourney will start generating 4 images at a time. And here is the final result. Looks actually really really cool. Then you're gonna have a bunch of options, and for each images you can either upscale or create variations of that image. So for example, let's say that I want a variation of this image. Since this is the image number 4, I'm gonna click on this button right here that says V4. And V4 does not stand for version 4, this button just stands for variation image 4. So if I click on this button, and as you can see very quickly, Midjourney generated 4 different variation images based on that image. And let's say I want to keep one of those and I want to upscale it. Let's say I want to upscale number 3. All you have to do is just click on this button right here that says U3, which basically stands for upscale image number 3. And as you can see, this is the final result. An absolutely beautiful upscaled image. There is really a lot of details here. That would be really difficult to reproduce in stable diffusion only without using any dream booth training. So this is really, really impressive. Now, speaking of impressive, what are actually some of the things that Midjourney does better than stable diffusion? And what are some of the things that Midjourney is not quite as good at compared to stable diffusion? Now, as you saw, Midjourney is actually pretty competent at understanding the concept 
of your prompt. I ask for a realistic vanilla carved mini pig in a soup bubble in the sky and this is exactly what I got. I got a mini pig, I got a bubble in the sky and I got a liquid. And all of that in a perfect harmony. The second good quality that Midjourney has over Stable Diffusion is how easy it is for anyone to actually use it and have absolutely amazing images. You don't need to be a prompt god like in Stable Diffusion to be able to generate insanely beautiful images. Here is an example. I simply input anime cat wizard, which is only three words in Midjourney and these are the results that I got, which are just fantastic. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot have this kind of quality in Stable Diffusion, but to be able to have this kind of results, you need to input more than simply three simple words. You would have to use a whole combination of styles, a whole combination of prompt modifiers, using negative prompts, and then hoping that you get lucky with the seed RNG. But with me journey, all you have to do is just put what you want and you're basically sure that you always get a super aesthetic image, which in my opinion is probably better for most of the population. Another good quality of Mid Journey is basically the amount of quality that you get for each generation. So this is the results that I got for a sea made out of jade with fish frozen in the jade. And as you see right here, this is exactly what I got, which is just an insane amount of details for just a simple generation. And this is what you get for pretty much every single image generated with the new V4. And also, as I said previously, since this is running on Discord, you can actually use this with your phone, with your tablet, from anywhere, as long as you have an internet connection. Which is again another good point for Mid Journey, since most people don't need to install anything to be able to use this wherever they are. Now, what are some of the bad things then? Well, first of all, the new Mid Journey V4 seems to be worse at generating pictures of celebrities. So as you see right here, this is my prompt, photo portrait of Christina Hendricks, and these are the results that I get. I'm sorry Mid Journey, but this does not look like McQueen. It just looks like a random redhead woman. A good looking redhead woman, but this is not Christina Hendricks. And Christina Hendricks is not the only one. If I try with another celebrity, for example photo portrait of Scarlett Johansson, these this is the result that I get, which again, mid journey, this is not Scarlett Johansson. Which is really strange because the previous version of mid journey actually had way better results. Now it's not perfect again compared to Stable Diffusion, which actually handles celebrities really really well out of the gate. So I'm really hoping that this get fixed in the future, but as of right now, if you want to generate images of celebrities, Mid Journey is probably not the best way to do it. Stable Diffusion is by far the king. Now another bad thing is the fact that Mid Journey currently only has the text to image option. Now technically they do have a image to image option, which is not really exactly the same as with Stable Diffusion. It's almost like a image inspiration option, because for example, if I upload an image of a random person and I want to turn that person into a cartoon character, these are the kind of results that I get, which is not exactly bad, but you don't really have any control over the final results. Now, if you want to use this, it's actually very simple. All you have to do is just click here and upload an image. And then once you've uploaded the image, you can simply click on it, right click and click on copy image link, then type slash imagine, and then paste the link for the image right here. And then once you've inputted the link for the image, you can input a prompt and then press enter. And these are the final results, which again are not bad, but you just don't have enough control over the final results. So personally, I wouldn't really use this option. And the last bad thing that the Mid Journey bot doesn't have, compared to Stable Diffusion, is the fact that as I just said, Mid Journey only has the text to image option. It does not have any image to image option, or any in painting, or any out painting. But don't worry because now this is actually the part of the video where I show you how you can use Mid Journey with Stable Diffusion out painting. And for this we'll be using the website called penthua.com. And if you don't know what that is, I highly suggest that you actually watch my previous videos on the subject. I will put a link to this video in the description down below. But to make it short, penthua.com is basically a website that connects to your local Stable Diffusion installation and allows you to outpaint directly into your browser. 
for absolutely free. And I'm also talking about this now because there has been a few updates from this website because now the installation process is actually a little bit simpler. Now if you remember correctly in my previous video, to be able to use this website, you had to right click on the web UI user bat file, edit with notepad, and then right here in set command lines ARJS, you needed to input dash dash API. And also you needed to come here in web UI.py, edit with notepad, and then you had to come in here, app user middleware and come with this line. But no worries because now you don't have to do this anymore. Now to be able to make this work, you need to right click on the web UI user bat file, edit with notepad, then in command line ARJS, you're still gonna put dash dash API, but then you're also gonna put dash dash port, and here you're gonna import a port number between 10,000 and 60,000, and also you're gonna input this command right here. Don't worry, everything will be in the description down below. So all you have to do is just copy and paste. But make sure that the only thing that you change is your port number. So in my case, in my example, I simply inputted 37,040, which is just a absolutely random number. And then you can save the file. Then you're gonna come on the website, penhua.com, click on config, and here you're gonna input your prompt number that you chose in the previous step. So in my case, it's 37,040. And then you can simply re-click on config and refresh the page. And also, just like last time, I highly suggest that you often click on this button right here that says help, because if there is an update to be able to make this work, you will see the entire procedure right here. And then to be able to make this work, all you have to do is simply launch Stable Diffusion. And then do not forget that since you have inputted a different port number, your local URL is now completely different. So again, I'm not gonna explain everything on how to make this work. You should really just watch the previous video for this, but just make sure that you are using the latest 1.5 in painting model with the in painting conditioning mass strength put at one. Otherwise, this will not work. And now let's actually combine mid journey and stable diffusion together. So here, let's say that I generated this image using mid journey. I'm just gonna come here, right click, copy the image, come to paintroid.com, click on this button right here to paste it, and then choose a place where I want to paste this image. And then all I have to do is simply click here on prompt and input a prompt for my image. So in my case, since this is Batman, I will simply input Dark Gotham City. And then I'm gonna select the outside of the image, left click, drag to choose the size that I want, and then left click again to begin the generation. And as you can see, this is the final result. And although it's not perfect, you can simply come in here with the mask tool and basically erase anything that you want. And then use the tool again. And this is the final result. And as you can see, we have used the mid journey image as a base and then use stable diffusion to outpaint the rest. This way we have basically the best workflow using Midjourney to easily generate awesome images and then importing that image in penhua.com and all of that for absolutely free. And there you have it folks, now you have the power of the best two text to image generator on the planet between your hands for absolutely free. So let me know how you plan to use these two tools together. That being said, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. Congratulations also to this week's AI Art Challenge winner, 0IQ2048, for his amazing Vador Cloud submission. What an amazing render. Super, super cool. Well done. And if you too want to participate to our AI Art Challenge that we do every week on Discord, you can click the link in the description down below to join my Discord server and maybe you too can be featured in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!